Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Inspired By and Why. So we are going to talk about the latest episode of Abbott Elementary. And I was glad to dip back into watching the show and get a chance to appreciate not only guest actors who I haven't seen on the show before, guest stars, but also to appreciate developing some of these characters and seeing them outside of the school. I have not been keeping up with Abbott Elementary, and so I'm loving seeing how they're really taking care of exploring the richness of the diverse characters that they have on here and giving them things to do based around the school, but and based around some of the school relationships, but not exclusively locked into the teaching routines that we might be familiar with by season three. So this is really great storytelling and this is really great screenwriting. I'm loving it, loving it, loving it. I still do think there's a lot we can talk about with the acting with some of the characters that may be ones that we have different opinions upon. So I want to get into that as well. And then on this show, we also dive into a spiritual connection. And so I was saying to you that I thought maybe that would be cool to start off with because I'm real curious what that's going to be for this episode. And I would like you to take it away, Tim. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, so I was looking um, at this episode through the lens of love. Mm. Not romantic love, but uh, you know, spiritual love, wishing, wishing others to be happy. The, the best example of that was um, Jacob. Yes, um, he wants Gregory to be happy. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's so excited for him to acknowledge how he feels right. on some level, some right. level about right. Janine toward the end of the episode. Right, right. So he, I mean, at first, you know, he wants him to be happy because he invites him on a double date. Right, and this lady that he has a double date with is perfectly lovely and interesting, right. and Gregory did her wrong by being distracted by Janine. Even though we're team Janine, she was lovely. Right, right. You can tell also he's just that. That's just the type of person he is. He Jacob. He, Jacob, yeah. Uh, he you know wants people to be happy in general. Yeah. He has a you know good good spirit. Um, uh, very positive most of the time. Yeah, and he seems like he's more relaxed when he's outside of Abbott Elementary, and he can sort of let some other parts of himself come through. Right. I think we a lot of us have different modes when we're in our right. workplace versus not, and I'm enjoying the comfort he sort of has being with his partner, uh -huh. being out on this date, wishing Gregory well, having Gregory's back, trying to make sure he doesn't embarrass himself as much as he was really trying to embarrass himself, right. trying to save face for Gregory at the end right, when right, Gregory right. goes and talks to Janine and tries to ask exactly. all these questions. And exactly. Jacob comes in and tries to save him from seeming like he's the only one who was thinking that Janine was on a date. Right. He's the only one who was thinking that. Right. <laughs> but she did have a freaking dress on, y'all. That That's coded as I'm cute and I'm ready to get uh, out here and have a good time. Uh -huh. So I, I did see, look at you looking yeah. at me like, yeah. like I don't know what a freaking dress is. I don't know what a freaking dress is. <laughs> I may have worn one. That may be how we know each other. Did you invent the freaking dress? You know me. <laughs> you know how I got you. Uh, so I do see him as this person who really is connected to his friend. Yeah. And loves yeah. to show that love. Mm -hmm. And maybe he's ridiculed for it a lot when he's right. at the workplace. Absolutely. But certainly outside the workplace, having your friends back is what people really right, right. expect and want to nurture. And we're not putting him down for it. It just feels yeah. natural. Yeah. In the workplace, he's seen as, you know, a, too much. Like, yeah, like a pushover or. A, yeah, he is seen as that, um, you know, because he cares about people and like what, yeah. what kind of what kind of weirdo would want to care about people? There's thing, also you know? a lack of confidence about some of his positioning. He's a white person in this space that is not predominantly white. And right. so I think some of it is he's trying to be on the back foot sometimes and not assume that he knows how right. everything should be interpreted right. and how he should be taken. That's true, yeah. And so in a way, I think some of his lack of confidence is a sense of, well, I don't run this place and maybe I don't know everything. And right, right. Maybe I should maybe take several seats. But it doesn't come across as that confidently saying, well, I don't know everything. It's like, well, I don't know everything. Right, 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 right. But it may be a more mature take on not being in a space where everyone looks like you and everybody has your background. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, yep. We appreciate Jacob. Yeah. I also yeah. appreciate having... Cree Summer there, mm. and the character of Miss Inez I wasn't familiar with. I guess this has only been a character that's come up a couple times. This maybe the second episode right. that she's been on. Right. That Cree, wonderful actor, wonderful voice actor mm -hmm. that we all know and love from Different World, playing Freddie Brooks. Well, I know and love folks who love black TV yeah. know and love. Do you know her too? 
Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I watched a Different World. Yeah. Okay, cool. And, you Thank know, you. I've yeah. heard I've heard her on numerous cartoons. Exactly, and whatnot. wonderful voice actor. Yeah. So she's put into this universe, and mm -hmm. she fits really well. As people were commenting, her little Cree summer hat fits really well in with this character of Library and Miss Inez. Yeah. So she's a part of this book club dynamic this time, and I was loving how we got to bring into some of the things that can get a little silly, some of the things that get extreme, but we brought into two dialogue on Abbey Elementary, which was entertaining and funny and had other types of humor. We brought in some serious statements at the end about diversity being mm -hmm. a strength in mm -hmm. extreme times. That's a palpable message that really hit me and it was gotten to in a scenario with this book club that got sillier and sillier and sillier, more and more extreme. And then in comes someone who you might not expect to right. have familiarity with speculative Afro-futuristic work like right. Parable of the Sower. But this uh, cafeteria worker, whose name I don't know because, again, I'm not keeping up with the show that well, right. uh, reads everybody and says, this is what you're supposed to take away from that. It's a mm -hmm. complex story told well. Y'all might not have been keeping up, but she was. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, my goodness. That diversity of looking for wisdom from different places. That diversity of you're supposed to be leaning on each other in extreme times and in regular times. Right. That felt very powerful. And I think Abbott had that potential in terms of where it is situated, what world it explores, to land messages, hit us with them. And it did so, so deftly. Yeah. I said, my yeah. goodness, mm -hmm. they know what they're doing combining all these layers of familiar romantic kind of foibles and mm -hmm. tension around dating and will they or won't they yeah. with zany kinds of ratcheting up these extreme characters conflicts with each other and then land a sneak shot of wisdom Bam, they mm -hmm. came with it mm -hmm. and i said oh the screenwriting oh the understanding of the characters and quinta as the show creator knowing that she sat something in a world that she could explore and not lose the entertainment value. I said, oh, Quinta, get your flowers, ma'am, because you really are paying off the potential of that show. When I saw it in earlier seasons, I didn't see them pay off all of that. Mm -hmm. But they had to let us know the characters and give us maybe some of the more traditional storytelling, will they, won't they moments, or how is Janine's char character's uh, career going to grow? You know, mm -hmm. there's some things that that area first wants you to explore before you get your Afro-futuristic <laughs> boom, hit it with us. I loved it. I loved it. As a screenwriter, I loved it. Did you appreciate that? Not as much as you did. You're here for the entertainment value. You're yeah, here yeah. for... I mean, I mean, I got it, but it, was, it didn't hit me as hard as it they did They didn't you. land it too heavily. They yeah. landed it very deftly. That's yeah. why it probably didn't hit you so hard because... I mean, it was, it was, it was um, uh, I wouldn't say like obvious, but you know, you, you get somebody who you wouldn't think does all this deep intellectual work and you know but it's have, just have them, you know, have them... Land the note. Yeah, yeah sure, yeah. exactly. That's, that's also something that brings right, your right. attention to it. Right. But it also fits exactly the the message that was coming forth. You need these diverse sources of wisdom. Sure, right. And sometimes right. it's coming from unexpected right, places. Right, right, right. And in fact, if we're to listen to voices we don't all often agree with, right. then we might expect to not be impressed by what they say and not want to take it on. Mm -hmm. And so it fit exactly with not just giving us, oh, okay, we didn't see that coming, right. but also slamming home that point. It was so well done, and I think it came later in the episode so you can just walk away with it and you can mm -hmm. marinate with mm -hmm. it. You were entertained, you were entertained, you were drawn in, drawn in. There right. was silliness, there was zaniness. There was relatable, realistic humor. Yeah. There was all kinds of notes here. And I think for me, watching this show get to season three and see them flex the knowledge of their characters mm -hmm. and pay off their relationships and then still be silly and still be zany. I can tolerate a little bit of the awkward humor. I can tolerate a little bit of the things getting more zany with the book club, mm -hmm. with uh, Ava's character throwing down the wings or whatever she, she yeah, had the yeah. food. And I was like, well, that's too much. But Ava's character is a little bit too much. And I think you might want to talk about that a, a little, little bit. bit. Yeah. I mean, it's not just the writing. I think also the way she's played is to lean into the fact that she is too much. And everybody around her right. reacts to the fact that you're just too much. Mm -hmm. So... 
I don't think they're shying away from having that extreme note. Right. It still does feel like it sits a little bit outside of other folks. Other folks have unpopular opinions. Ava does too. But I think they're playing those characters a little bit more closed in on realistic. And mm -hmm. she's a little bit like a, not unhinged, but she's wild for being in leadership like that. Right, right. So I wouldn't mind talking about that. I think the acting choices that she's making is that Janelle, I think that's her name. Uh, I think Janelle is leaning into what's there on the page and just bringing it to life. Yeah, yeah. I don't think she's pushing it too far. Right, right. But what I guess that character is meant to do is be too much. Right, exactly. Yeah. So I think we've talked in the past about this kind of thing for this show and mm -hmm. other shows too. What what about what you have in a character that is supposed to be too much? There are characters that are larger than life in real life. Yeah. And there's a function that somebody can play in an ensemble to be the one who irritates people a certain way and you know, causes a lot of drama, turns things upside down. Yeah. So what did you yeah. think about seeing Ava again and is she fitted into everything more for you just from coming back to the show months later since we last saw it, is she rubbing you the wrong way still? Uh, or are you not okay? as much. Like, I think uh, the first season she was, or maybe I'm just used to it, I don't know, but she, it, seemed, it seems like the first she season. She wears you down. <laughs> yeah, it seems like the first season she was, like, more extreme, and are now we... she's, you know, still... You know, still extreme, still, but like a little bit more tamped down. Is it that she's tamped down or is it that we're used to her? Because we've sort of accepted that she's a right. part of this mix and people right. react to her as if she's too much. So they're not acting like this is normal for a leader to be like this. Right, right. But she's still there. And this district is not well resourced. So they yeah. might not have a lot of other options in terms of people who want to stick around and right. help lead. And they did show some other sides of her in terms of being grounded in some relationships outside the district mm -hmm. in ways that were really touching. So they're yeah. giving her some depth. Yeah. But we're still seeing this note of she gets to do the extreme things, right. which get a, and a reaction out of me, but I also felt like they took it a little bit, you know, outside of what I would think would be realistic. Yeah. Y'all yeah. staying around in the school space, dropping your food out. Like, to me, that was just like, that's what took me out. And I guess people that are... <laughs> That's probably very realistic, but uh -huh. I'm just like, that's not realistic to litter. Well, probably it is, but. So you weren't bothered. You were not bothered. I like not, that. Not any more than usual. Uh, well, <laughs> but that's what we can talk about here yeah, because yeah. when you've got humor, you've got people needing to push as right, actors, right. as writers. Yeah. Uh, if yeah. you give us realism and create it in just a certain way, then people can play within it's very realistic and it can be funny but a lot of times it's just easier to just push and go slightly outside of what's realistic yeah so lot, i think with that character easier, yeah yeah i think with that character they're allowing us to try yeah. to suspend disbelief a little bit right. like right. i think barbara's so believable being woman of faith and being someone who has been at that district for decades right. and really right. has been holding things down in a difficult place and making a difference in the community she just feels like people that you know and i think melissa with her roughness and like, look, mm -hmm. in the end times, if you got to make a decision, you got to do something like, I, I think we know and we are afraid of people like Melissa in the real world. And right. You just go on and go on. All these different characters have combinations of things about them that are expected and some things that are unexpected. Mm -hmm. They're allowed to have layers. And it's not that I've really been paying attention. Y'all who really know Ava's story over the seasons, correct us where we're wrong because we probably have missed some nuance they started to bring in with her character, because they certainly did so with relationships since we were really keeping up with Abbott. So let us know if we've been missing some things about Ava. I certainly love the way Janelle is leaning into the funny. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's a comedian. Mm -hmm. This is why she's there. She does not disappoint. Right. right. Ava is not played flat. Right. <laughs> you know? So right. I think we talked a bit about, as we like to do on the show, the writing. Talked a bit about the acting. Yeah. In terms of music, I don't think because it's like this 
fake documentary kind of thing. I don't think they have a whole lot of music yeah, that I notice. Yeah. I know sometimes they have special guest stars who are big time musicians. Right, like right, I guess right. they had Questlove on the previous episode, which I did not see. Okay. So maybe there was some music there for Ava Fest too, which we missed out on, mm -hmm. but that's okay because we have other things we talked about and enjoyed. You know what? I might try to catch them again because I really appreciate as someone who wants to try to land key messages in an entertaining way. I appreciate when somebody pulls it off mm -hmm. and they're not heavy handed, but it's still something for us to take away and think about later. Right, right. I mean, it's not like I'm going to sit and just be up all night thinking about it, but it was just well done. Yeah. yeah in a yeah. comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Comedy is hard it's, yeah. as far as writing, you know, it's, I think it's, you know, one of the, one of the harder genres of writing. Definitely is for me to balance the whole need to explore the funny and give people the jokes yeah. while you're also really trying to be careful with your characters and not yeah. pushing them to do something yeah. just to have it be funny. Right. You got to let it come. The humor, I think, that I like comes from mm -hmm. the characters being in conflict with one another mm -hmm. in a realistic way, yeah. but then getting on each other's nerves and then it goes up from mm -hmm. there. And... What I like stays just this side of a little too zany, but yeah. I was laughing at this. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's entertaining. It's well done. It's well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think you were able to make the connection you wanted to through Jacob, right? through right. spirituality. And I love that for this season of Inspired By and Why, we had the will they, won't they touch on romance. Mm -hmm. So there are different mm -hmm. ways to think about romance and all the different stages of it. And right, right. We're still in the early stages with Janine and Gregory. Yeah. Will they or won't they? Y'all let us know if y'all hang in with Abbott. We're probably going to end up checking back with them for the season finale because I like the storytelling they're doing and I want to see how they land that season finale. Yeah. I mean, there's some really excellent storytellers working on that show. Way to go, y'all. Enjoying the whole package. So y'all take care, comment, like, and subscribe. Please comment on the wonderful, quirky characters of color. I think I've mentioned wanting to know more of characters of color that were quirky, and we have them jam-packed into Abbott Elementary. So the universe brought that to my doorstep. Right. Thank you. But y'all can also comment on more quirky characters of color on shows and in movies now. And like and subscribe, support us, say hello. And let us know if you want us to look at things from any other angles. We love to do so and then provide interesting uh, special visual effects <laughs> to delight us as we do that. Y'all take care. Bye.